Greetings! Welcome to the Week 8 Early Access Update for Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades. We're going to start off as usual with a sound check. Make sure your speakers aren't up too high. Wonderful. So to start small and work our way up, I want to first talk about some quick changes that were made to the item spawner. You will find that now, with a given firearm, say our G22 here, a magazine spawns automatically with the firearm. I realized that before that, there was a whole lot of unnecessary button presses, so hopefully this is more convenient for you. In addition to that, especially for those of you who might be running below min spec, I know a bunch have requested the ability to remove excess firearms and objects, and you'll now find in the indoor range and the warehouse range the destructive bin, which we can now just toss things into, and they get automatically destroyed. Goodbye shotgun. Goodbye other shotgun. Wonderful. So now, let's get on to the meat of this week's update. After last week and its fairly unsuccessful gun-based teleportation experiment, I decided to spend another week playing around with locomotion modalities, and through that process, originally testing on the breaching scene and then building a bespoke environment for it, I've put together a sort of prototype game mode for grappling-based locomotion. So what does this mean? So we're going to go ahead and take the, uh, the firearm that is assigned to us in this mode. I'm going to drop that in my quick belt slot. And to begin this mode, we basically just tap that green button, and we have a sort of part firing range, part obstacle course to get through. So I'm not going to hit that yet. I'm just going to show you how the locomotion works. Basically, anything that is grabbable by you, you'll see this sort of blue highlight. And so this is various sorts of bars and rails and handles. When I grab one of these, and only one can be active at once, if you click on a second one, it will sort of override uh, which sort of hand is in charge, we can move through the environment. In this case, via sort of overhand swing, we can come around here. Now, obviously, this type of motion would, would generally mean that you, you know, you'd want to, say, take the most optimal and fast way through a course. So I decided to try to build a, a game mode that was based around having to be a little more careful about it. And so the way this works is that this entire environment is a time trial where blue targets will spawn. You have to hit these yellow circles, but also, very importantly, your head cannot enter any of the red boxes or plunge through the walls. If it does so, you'll get a 10 second penalty, thus encouraging you to say quite carefully move about the various obstacles, etc. So yeah, so I will, I, I'm going to go ahead and just start just the beginning of this. You can take a look. This devlog will end with a recording of me actually going through the entire course, which takes, based on how fast you are, somewhere in the range of seven to nine minutes. So let's return to our starting place. And let's say we are about to go now. So yeah, and the course goes on from here. I'm just gonna stop doing that for now. Here's an example, by the way, of what happens when you stick your head into something. You get a nice little warning for it. So yeah. So in addition to the gymnasium, 
which is obviously an environment built entirely around the grappling system, I decided to try to retrofit the breaching environment with similar handles just to see how that experiences, especially because unlike in the Gunnasium, you can still teleport as normal in this environment. Let's come on over here. And in fact, the breaching environment was what originally gave me this whole idea in the first place. I had been playing around with it, thinking about directions that you can traverse the environment, and I thought to myself, man, it'd be wonderful if I could climb up to the balcony. So this pipe that was added here was actually the first thing that I got working with this new movement schema. Oh goodness, I am all new! You can also clamber along all of these ledges, the top surfaces, of the insides of the various windows have grab points, as well as plenty other things within the environment. So yeah, so please give this a try. Let me know what you think. I am still working on eventually adding a sort of, at least for certain modes, a dedicated teleportation button, which I think long-term is going to be the only solution for teleporting while having your hands full. Is, is sort of dedicating a button to it contextually. Whether this ends up being part of the touchpad or the menu button up here, I haven't decided yet, but that's going to be part of this coming week's experiments. But until then, give the grab-based the uh, grab -based traversal a try and tell me what you think. So yeah, other than those scenes, a number of other little bug fixes, additions, and changes have been made this past week. Let's see here, I've added a height toggle to the grenade ski ball finally. There's original, which was the, the height when the prototype was first made, and then slightly lower, and then lowest, which is what it is in, say, the current build, before I push today's update. Um, let's see here, I fixed some issues involving cl collision audio that have been irritating, especially for those of you standing in the indoor range, if you keep he have been hearing, say, a weapon execute its gun drop sound over and over periodically, that should finally be fixed. Um, rounds can now be loaded into the MP5 and UMP magazines. Um, let's see here. What else? What else? And some assorted, some folks were reporting a bug involving the foregrip and use of the quick belt for the SMGs that should be fixed as well. So yeah, so what else? What's it, what else is, what am I gonna be working on this next week? So part of, part of what I worked on this week, actually I don't have anything to show yet because it was all API work, but I've been porting over from a prior prototype I worked on for a couple months, about a half a year ago, is a ballistic system that I was working on that actually takes material properties such as yield strength and brittleness and mass and dimensions of an actual projectile into account for determining things like ricochets and penetrations. And so I've been in the process of migrating that over. I had hoped to have a little debugging scene ready to show this week, but it's, it's still glitching out on me. So that'll all have to wait till the next devlog. But I'm really excited because it will add to the ability to It'll basically be an underlying system from which when I eventually do say do various round types like hollow points versus versus FMJ rounds, that will actually matter. And so rounds will actually have a penetrative capability to them and various objects in the various environments that you shoot should react to them fairly correctly. It's necessary, necessarily illustrative because of just how complex the physics of such things are in real life, but I think I have something that that feels pretty good. So it's just a good deal more implementation work. So yeah, so I'm gonna leave you here today with a, a full video run through of me going through the entire Gunnasium course. There are 20 yellow hand objects, buzzers to uh, hit and 60 targets. Um, I'm really, I don't have this high scoreboard built for it yet. So you'll have to share just a picture of your high score via the Steam community for this week. But I'm super curious as to what sort of times you guys get. 
So enjoy it, and I will see you next week.